Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. We got a little bit of a imagine that in my background. All right. Cars parked right outside. I'm about to take a ride. Ladies and gentlemen, I got some information to tell y'all. I hope y'all can handle the information because it's going to be not a rapid fire type thing, but it's going to be information. We're going to tell y'all, we've been telling you guys about dealing with a, uh, I'm a, uh, yeah, because that, that right there, I can't listen to that and talk to y'all at the same time because I'll be picking up on the words and saying the words. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've done a couple videos as of late letting you guys know about the people that I've been speaking to who have either been incarcerated, because I let people call me who are incarcerated, and when they call me, I give them advice, because that's what I do. And I told you how the last two people I spoke to, I told them what they needed to do, and they listened! They did what I told them to do. One of them got released two days later. The other one, judge says, I'm about to release you, and the guy said, really? So they followed the advice that was given and it worked wait 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 uh, two in a row ladies and gentlemen they both called me one after the other from two different states but but hold on the second one who the judge says hey i'm about to release you he go uh but you may have to sign some paperwork for probation he says you may he didn't say you gonna have to sign some probation paperwork he said you may probation okay I told him to shut up. No matter what the judge says, don't say nothing. The judge was recontracting with him. The moment he probation, the judge could say, well, by doing that, you indicated that you weren't going to do probation. And I can't possibly put you back out there on the street knowing that you might be a danger to society. Now, that's good water. Sorry, two liter bottle of water needed it because it is going to be over a hundred today a hundred people in the country of Mexico have died as a result of heat stroke I suspect the same thing has happened in this case but to a larger extreme ladies and gentlemen stay hydrated especially those of you who are in those states that are reaching 99 degrees, 100 degrees, stay hydrated and stay in the shade. Don't be out there in nobody's sun. The heat index is a whole lot worse than what you think. So stay out of the heat. All right, there was a gentleman. He received several tickets, driver's license, no insurance, uh, kind of, you know, reckless driving and no registration and no tags on the license plate received all them tickets the officer knows the person and they impounded his vehicle so I told him you're simply gonna file bankruptcy to get that vehicle back <laughs> they're a debt collector the same thing goes for them because remember you're getting it from the impound yard and not getting it from the police debt collector and as long as the bankruptcy is going on psh, they ain't nothing they can do now look, he had a passport. So I told him, I said, I haven't told anybody to do this yet. This is what I would do if I was in that situation. Now I want y'all to listen, because I ain't told nobody to do this yet. But I'm going to tell y'all, because this is exactly what I would do if somebody pulled me over for driving without a license and not having any insurance and not having any rage administration and whatever. You simply do this. You simply go to the court, ask them for their subpoenas. Because you're going to go handle this in court. So you're going to use their process. Don't use your process. Use their process. Beat them with their own junk. Holler if you hear me. No, no, y'all hollering too loud. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you subpoena everybody. The Speaker for the House the Speaker for the Senate of your state legislature, then you want to subpoena the DMV director. Then you want to subpoena the Attorney General for the state. 
you have the right to call witnesses. They're saying that you are required to have a license to drive an automobile. You're calling those individuals to testify. Why? Because somebody said it was the law. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court on several occasions have already held that a right cannot be converted to a privilege. Did you know that you had the right to travel? No, 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 this ain't that junk that y'all be spewing when they pull you over. But because you have the right to travel, they cannot convert a right to a privilege. Now, yes, there must be order on the highways. So there have to be speed limits on the highways. You can't be doing 100 miles an hour and going through red lights, morons. Yeah, I said it. There are some idiots out there who think they can drive however they want. Because they, whoever they, look, you guys are morons. There needs to be regulations. So there needs to be stop signs. There needs to be traffic lights. There needs to be speed limitations. Look, even though everybody has the ability of running who have legs and are able body, everybody has the ability of running, but not everybody runs at the same speed. But then not everybody needs to run every single day. So everything is a moderation issue. Everything is a moderation issue. Everything is a moderation issue. Moderation. So they can regulate speed, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't matter if the Constitution only says they can regulate commerce. They can regulate speed because it's for the general welfare. So they do it for public safety. They have that right. We gave them that right, so don't take it away from them. However, what they can't regulate is whether or not you need a license. Why? Because it has nothing to do with public safety. Your having a license has no bearing on whether somebody lives or dies. I'll let you hear me. So there is no requirement in any law for you to have a driver's license. So this is how you handle that, if y'all are paying attention. Somebody gives you a ticket for having a driver's license, you call the officer and ask them where to get that junk from. You go down to the Department of Motor Vehicles in your state and you get a copy of their application for a driver's license. And say, is this the application for a driver's license? When you have each one of them on the stand. Well, I don't know. Is it an application for a driver's license? What does it say at the top? Okay, so then it's an application for a driver's license. Anyway, Your Honor, instruct that witness to sit up there and answer the question as directed. Well, I don't know. Oh, shut up. Anyway, let's get back to the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. Now that you got them to understand that a driver's license requires an application, because, and this is what you're going to ask, can anyone get a driver's license without filling out an application? For a driver's license. Well, no, that's not the part of you. Okay, so nobody can get a driver's license unless they fill out an application. Oh, Your Honor, I, I move for immediate dismissal. Oh, well, I'm glad you need asking for a dismissal. Oh, well, because you cannot impede the obligation of contract. You cannot force me to contract in order to exercise a right. You cannot make me contract in order to exercise a right. And now you're impeding my right to contract. You're forcing me to contract with you by saying I am required to have this license. Ladies and gentlemen, the application specifically says under penalty of perjury that you agree, blah, 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 blah. Does it matter if it's the context is you're agreeing that the information contained in? No, the context says that I am agreeing to abide by the laws and regulations that are listed here and referenced here. That's what the context says. So you are forcing me to agree. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope some of y'all are getting what's being said. Some of y'all will understand. Now, some of you all are out there drinking and thinking you can drive and do whatever you want. As long as you are a threat to public safety, you have no rights. Do you have to have your automobile registered? No. Ladies and gentlemen, get a non-operative permit for your vehicle. I am not operating this automobile on the highways. You see, this is a permit for me 
to be non-operative on the highways. It says I can't drive. Well, I am not driving this vehicle on the highway because I am not engaged in the business of commerce. Go and look at the definition of driving. Look at where it came from. A hearse and mule driver? Well, that was the guy who was being paid to take you someplace. You don't believe me? Go back and look. But a regular person wasn't called a driver of a carriage. Don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I know y'all didn't know these things. It ain't my fault. Did I do that? So, I told the individual he's going to file bankruptcy chapter 13 regarding the car. Go get your vehicle. They don't have no right to hold it and you don't have to pay any fees. Ladies and gentlemen, only a creditor may report an outstanding debt to the credit reporting bureaus. It's called the Consumer Credit Protection Act and the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Okay? Fair Credit Reporting Act, only the creditor can report a bad debt. They cannot report bankruptcy because bankruptcy is not an outstanding debt, so it cannot be reported on taxes. Y'all hear me? No, y'all don't hear me though. So when they have been yelling and screaming at y'all, oh no, you can't file bankruptcy. It's gonna steal your taxes for a hundred years. That's a lie. Bankruptcy cannot stay on your uh, credit report. I said taxes. Anyway, bankruptcy cannot stay on your credit report for not even a year. It can't even stay on there for five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Only a creditor can report an outstanding debt to the credit reporting agencies. The bankruptcy court is not a creditor. And the filing of bankruptcy is not an outstanding debt, meaning Bankruptcy cannot be reported on your credit report. Yay! So, they impound your car, file bankruptcy, and go get your vehicle. I just had somebody do it earlier this year, and I've been telling you guys, this is at least the fourth video this year I've been telling you guys to do this. Been saying stuff like this since 2012. What y'all doing? What y'all waiting on? How many of y'all had your cars repossessed and didn't listen to me? What you got to lose? Well, I don't want to have no credit break up. You got a repossession. What you mean you don't want to have your credit messed up? What the? Woosa. Woosa. Ladies and gentlemen, there are other things that people can do to have the item completely removed from their credit. We tell people that when we put them through our program, I want you all to pay attention to this because this is very important. We tell people when we put them through our program, that this was not for people who were currently going through foreclosure. Several people are currently going through foreclosure and they went through our program. We needed time because there was a total of 18 documents that was being sent out, a 19th document that was just sent out, and lawsuits that are being filed. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I do need y'all to pay attention to this. We had a woman email us through one account and then she communicated with the department through a different account under a different email address. Now, if I go into fidelity.com right now, and I try to go into my account, and I try to use a different email address, they will not let me have access. Hold on now. No, no, hold on now. If I'm trying to go into Amazon, and I'm trying to access my account under this name, blah, 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 but I signed in under a different email address that's not associated with that account, they're not gonna let me have access to that account. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we operate the exact same way. You must communicate through the email in which you set up the service. She didn't do that, so we brought it to her attention. I even did a mini consult with her, spoke to her for over an hour, told her what she could do because she had an immediate situation. I said, this is what you need to do. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. Do you know she went to her bank and said, yeah, I got what I wanted out of that mother. Let me have my money back. 
do you know that it cost us $75 for them to refund her $460 or whatever it was? $75 to just to have them refund her money. Oh, no, no, no. They take that out of our pocket. They don't take that out of hers. Okay. So I wrote her back and told her I got to figure out how I'm going to handle this. Because it's not the normal course of day for our people to do the work on somebody's stuff and for them to sit up there and be that shady. Spoke to her over the telephone. Gave her every question she asked. We spoke over an hour, people. Over an hour. Didn't, even told her, I said, this is your mini consult. I said, we've been talking over an hour, but I hope you have the answers to take care of those problems you're having right now. She thanked me, hung up the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, to my surprise last night, she asked for a refund. And they gave it to her. I can challenge it. I can challenge it, and they'll, they'll pull it back. Uh, but I'm not going to challenge it. Because they took the money out of my account. And they took it out of the account after 30 days. 30 days are up. But we don't have a 30-day period for refund. We have a three-day opt-out clause. We don't have a refund policy where you can just sit up here and say, well, oh, I got what I wanted out of y'all. Bye-bye. That, that doesn't work. So let me tell you how I handle things. Because we've been having problems with, I spoke of Fidelity.com. Fidelity.com has been giving us a problem for nine months. I haven't really been worried about it because I said those funds will be available when we need it. It's about $5,000. And they've been holding on to it. They said that uh, they were alleging fraud. Said, verify this, verify that, verify this. Put us through all kind of hoops. We've been through that before. Put us through all kind of hoops. We verified everything. Then they said, oh, we closed your account. When did you close my, our account? Oh, when we first asked you to verify, your account was already closed. Then why did you ask us to verify? Oh, that's just company policy. That's standard policy. No, what you were doing is you were doing an investigation, and you were also data collecting. So you were doing points of reference. So I sent them a letter. Hey, uh, I know what you guys are doing. So you ain't got my permission to share my information, my data, or anything with anyone else. So get it straight, homie. And they did it anyway. Now, so I told him, I said, hey, guys, I need to file a complaint. They said, you ain't filing nothing. I said, no, no, y'all don't understand. I am not that Negro. Y'all don't get to mess with me like this. Y'all don't want to do this. They said, we're going to do whatever we want. I said, are you sure? They said, yeah, mother, we show. Uh, oh, okay, no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I called them back about five minutes. Later. I said, excuse me, I need to file a complaint. What type of complaint you want to file? Oh, I'm, I'm going to be charging you with fraud. And so I'm going to be needing to file an insurance claim with, you know, the FDIC insurance claim. Can you tell me the policy for that? Uh, sir, could you hold on a second? Oh, sure, I can hold on. Well, I just, no, 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 no. I can hold on. Don't you worry about explaining nothing. I can hold on. Because minute by minute by minute by minute, I keep holding on. I keep holding on. So I held on, y'all. My phone is my phone is ringing. Y'all hold on one second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sorry. Uh, this is me moving some funds around because I just made another uh, $189 just by sitting around doing nothing. I'm not joking. It's called commissions. So I get that just for doing nothing all I had to do was wait so let's see where was it where's the amount that I just got I just owed oh, that 157 plus 33 uh, 151 plus 33 that that was the commission that I just got blah 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 all right ladies and gentlemen total amount in the account is ten thousand six hundred and forty two dollars today is four weeks and two days so it took a month and two days to go from $300 to $10,664, plus the other money that's on stock. Now, if you guys didn't understand what's going on, I'll explain to you what's going on just briefly, and then we're gonna get back into this, talking about the consults and what people have gotten.
ladies and gentlemen, what's going on right now is the company who bought up the company that we're dealing with is Binance. And this is all the evidence points to Binance. They haven't officially announced it, but all of the facts add up. And so, with that being the case, Binance is being sued by the SEC and the Attorney General's office. So Binance is up Banini Creek right now. And so they can't do any withdrawals because the SEC is accusing them of fraud and money laundering. But Binance wasn't the company at the time we came into this. It was a different company. And everybody wanted to accuse that company of fraud. They didn't have to get any fraud. They didn't have any evidence. They were just doing that to get you know how colorful it is. Anyway, yeah, I said it. Anyway, I had to help everybody to understand that everything they were doing was legal and that they were following the law, and this is what cryptocurrency companies do. And finally, people are now saying that I was right. That's right, they're seeing it now. They weren't seeing it at, at the beginning. Now, oh, I stepped away from the computer. When I step away from the computer, y'all just can't hear me from time to time, because sometimes it don't switch it completely to the headset. I was apologize. Okay, as a matter of fact, come tomorrow. I will probably switch to the other headset, and I'm pulling it out now because I haven't used it in a while. Come here. One second. If y'all can still hear me, I have two headsets. So I'm going to try both of them out. All right, so I got my two Bluetooth headsets, and I'm going to try both of them out. I have so many different electromatronics around here that... We're gonna plug these in so I can test them out tomorrow to give you guys simply the best. Uh oh, y'all hear that right there? That's Lupta. That's my ringtone for now. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what you guys don't know is I have been, excuse me, I've been bombarded with phone calls. It has been hours since I started this video which is what normally happens this is friday and i had one young lady call me up she's got a situation and i tried to explain to her she oh yeah you're like that and you need to listen in there and i'm like look here <laughs> i already know what you're gonna say i already know what's going on because you just told me in the little brief description and it turns out at the end of the call i was right by the way i asked poignant questions of the young lady and remember she's just calling she's not doing a consult she's just calling because she has a question and so I'm explaining she was confused about the arbitration thinking that the arbitration could overturn a judge and a judgment people y'all got to stop thinking that arbitration is an administrative process the judge is putting you through an administrative process when you guys don't answer when you don't respond when you don't show up in court you are in breach of your process administrative and thus you will suffer the consequences of that and that administrative process Get it? sorry I have a battery charger uh, going on the vehicle and I needed to make sure that it was charging because I'm getting ready to go turn it off now this was what I was getting at with all of you each of the individuals we're asking a question. Let's deal with the driver's license thing because I've had several people call me in the last couple of days from Florida that got driver's license issues. People say, well, the county I'm in is this and the county, it don't matter about what county you're in. It's the same principles of law. I go by principles of law. I don't care about your county. I don't care about your judge. I don't care how corrupt they are. None of that matters. Judge is corrupt, then you go after the judge, but you go after the judge after you clear up all the other junk. The same as I'm getting ready to do. And I, I'm, I'm methodical, take my time, I ain't got time for stupidity, so I'm going after the judge. I'm not making no physical threat. I'm going after them with their own rules and their own procedures. Anyway, this is not about judges, this is about traffic tickets. So as I told you before, we're gonna continue that conversation, I'm gonna tell you about the other young lady. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have a traffic ticket, pay attention, when you have a traffic ticket, let's do that right here. We're going to open up another window. 
come on I said open open sesame and in this window we're gonna put I'm gonna put DMV DMV all the rest of you got a uh, motor vehicle department but we're gonna put DMV a P P L I C A I O N dot D D F you want to go down to the Department of Motor Vehicles and get yourself a copy of their driver's license application. Now this one says application for certificate of title. We don't want an application for certificate of title. We want application for driver's license. You want to get it for your state. Don't get it for Nevada if you ain't in Nevada. I'm getting it for Nevada because I'm using this as an example. An example? An example. Ag, like agriculture? Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, I have been messing with this uh, combination and I've been putting together some food because y'all been hearing me. I ain't been complaining about, oh, I feel so horrible, but I have been feeling horrible because of the temperature change. I told y'all I cannot adjust my body temperature like y'all can. So we were 49 degrees when I woke up this morning. We're 95 degrees inside, 95 degrees been waiting because I needed to buy a battery so I can run the air conditioning. Right now the air conditioning is too much of a draw on my system. And so it'll trip the switch after so long. And I don't have time for that. So I just bought the battery today and it will be here next week. After the heat wave? After the heat wave. But we're okay. Oh, okay. Getting back to our conversation. When I open this application, everyone, the first thing we're gonna look at is that it's gonna use the word I in the singular form, meaning you. And then it's gonna use it again at the bottom. But throughout the application, it's gonna keep saying I, 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 I. That means you're agreeing to something. Shame on you for agreeing to something you don't even know you're agreeing to. So hold on while I pull this up so that y'all can see. All right, it's been about 15 minutes, but it took a long time for these two to pull up. I decided to open up two of them. One of them is Nevada. Now I want you, I told you it was gonna say I, 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 I. Well, it doesn't say it at the beginning like you would think. So it's implied, why? Are you a United States citizen? You can just put a line through that because you don't need to be a United States citizen. Are you 18 years or older? You can say yes. Are you currently blah, blah, blah? Ladies and gentlemen, fill this out however you want. Okay? Look at this. This is for their use. Why? Why is that for their use? But let's continue. <sighs> if you're a male, selective service, don't need to sign that. U.S. Arm, don't need to sign that. Okay, just, just gotta know it. There is no, uh, what you call it? There's no draft. So stop it. <sighs> Consent for minor's license. We don't have to, don't play. Just fill it out the way it's supposed to be. Don't play games. Well, I'm a minor anyway, whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention. Instruction permit. I certify that I understand my instruction permit is valid for one year. This is for minors. Now that part is for minors but it's also for people who are represented by someone else. Aren't you representing the straw per uh, Don't get technical with them. I know, but that's what people are gonna say. Ladies and gentlemen, minor organ donor, don't have to worry about that. Non-use of Nevada driving privilege. Driving is a privilege, not a right. Can you say that again? Driving is a privilege. Not all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I have the screen door open, and there are these little flies, and these little creatures bite. And they're, they're really small, and they can get through the mesh of the screen door. Ain't that about a, you know what I'm saying? Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to pay attention. Driving is a privilege. I have not operated a motor vehicle since. I'm going to suggest y'all definitely fill that out and initial it. Okay, because you're not operating on somebody's stupid motor vehicle. No social security number. 
this is the part you're going to pay attention to. The driver's license or identification card application you are submitting will cause any driving record from your previous state to be transferred to Nevada and will show as surrendered. You people are not surrendering your driver's licenses. You're letting them suspend it. Before you get your license suspended, you're supposed to surrender that junk. Why? Because if you surrender it, how can they suspend it? Say that again. If you surrender it, and I would surrender my driver's license by registered mail. Hold on now. This requires you to register each vehicle you own and operate within 30 days of becoming a resident. Really? That code right there, is that what it requires? Pay attention. I, that's you, hereby certify under penalty of perjury. Eyes are green, eyes are contracting with y'all. That all the statements, because you're testifying, in this application are true and correct. Not true and partially accurate, but true and correct. Ain't nothing wrong, so y'all can put me under the penalties and perjuries. I understand. I stands under that any and all of the driver's licenses, identifications cards issued by any other jurisdiction will be surrendered. Upon the issuance of a Nevada license and identification card. Why would I do that? I'm, a, I'm still signing it. I'll certify that. Yeah. Go get that from them. Why you can't have two IDs? I do. Ladies and gentlemen, I maintain a driver's license from New York. That's when I had driver's licenses. Maintain a driver's license from New York, a driver's license from California, and a driver's license from North Carolina all at the same time. Mm-hmm. So did, because I be that. Anyway, let's continue. I further understand that any misstatements of facts may be a misdemeanor or a felony and may be punishable pursuant. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a contract. That's why they want your wet ink signature. Changes may not be made to this form once signed. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. All of you are signing a contract. Pay attention. And they're holding you to the letter of the contract. Now, I want you to pay attention because you agree to follow their code. I didn't say that. You agree. It says you are required to submit your social security number so that the state may administer laws related to licensing drivers. Pay attention. Administer. You are required. Hold on. Maybe y'all didn't hear me. You are required to submit your social security number. No, you are not. No one can demand you give them your social security number so that the state, pay attention y'all, get that out of my way so I can see, so that the state, so that the state, so that the state may administer laws related to licensing drivers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going through an administrative process. I didn't say it. You you saw it right there. This is the Nevada. Hold on now. I'm going to tell y'all how to handle it in a second, okay? Hold on now. Hold on. Uh-oh. I done messed up. Give me one second. I, get back over here. I don't know how that happened, y'all. That's the Eon Foundation. I'm looking for driver's license. Oh, there it is right there. That driver's license. See right there? Get out of here, y'all. Oh, we redid the links because some of them weren't working. And guess what? I'm mad at you guys because y'all didn't tell me that the donate link wasn't working. You guys thought I did it on purpose. No, I didn't. That's the system messing with us. 
Okay. Oh, but no, hold on. Let me explain. Because I was paying the staff out of my own pocket, because Fidelity was holding on to our monies, they released it today. It got deposited into our account today, only after I threatened them with FDIC, as I told you guys at the beginning of the video. Okay, so everything is fine, but I had $6 in my account for the whole week. And I went to my guy Jehovah last night. I said, hey, Jehovah. He said, you know, you and I kind of tight. He's like, show you right. I said, Jehovah. I said, things are getting kind of tight. I said, I just had this woman sit up here and say, after we did all this work for her, that she wanted a refund and called her bank and cost us almost $75. Said, Jehovah, I can't afford this right now. There's too many other things going on. You got SEC going after Binance and the other cryptocurrency, so we can't do any withdrawals right now because of the dumb lawsuit. Said, so Jehovah, I need your help. There was almost $6,000 that we were able to bring to the account. $4,000 became a reality and the other 4500 and the other thousand plus dollars will be added to the account by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So I'm able to breathe. Tony Braxton, where you at? I'm able to breathe again, y'all. All right. That's how I exercise faith in my God. I rely on him. I don't rely on me. That was last night I talked to him. I had no idea how he was going to work it out, but I put it in his hands, not in mine. Again, I put it in his hands. If you don't believe me, hold on now. This is Battery Evo. Where the card at? Oh, come on now. I'm already paid for. Oh, the card's empty. See, it was one in here. It's empty. I had to get a battery for the air conditioner unit. I didn't get one of these. I can't afford that. <laughs> I just I just got back on the block with, you know, uh, and, and so I think this is the one I got. It's either this one. I think it's this one. Yeah, this is the one I got. Two kilowatt, 60 amp. This is the one I got. Because I'm adding it to my other unit so that I will have the capacity to handle the surge of turning on that those two large air conditioning units. This particular vehicle has two air conditioning units on it. And that junk pulls a lot of power because it wasn't designed to be ran through solar so that's what i have to do evo the cheapest batteries out there for solar anyway ladies and gentlemen again i needed that because like i said i don't get to adjust my body temperature the way y'all do and it's very difficult for me to get through the day now i want you I want you all to pay attention i and then where's the other i at because that's i i i agree i agree i understand i agree I understand. I agree. I understand. I agree. Contract! Just focus on that. It's a contract, people. Hold on. Let's see that it's universal. Uni? Uni meaning two. Uni meaning one. Uni meaning you and me. Uni! Same information, ain't it? Hold on. Got to gotta mark the package. Contact information. Got to show where the package came from. Hold on now. Hold, hold on, hold on. Are you a citizen? If no, go to question number three. Are you a veteran? If no, go to question number four. Do you have health condition that would impair your ability to communicate? What a peace officer. Do you want to donate? Do you support? Do you want to support? Huh? Why, why all them stupid questions? Because that's distraction, ladies and gentlemen. You, you know, they got to they gotta distract you with the stupidity. So let's play the game. We're going to go on down here. We don't care about vehicle registration information, but you're going to check a box, all right. Why are you going to check a box? Because vehicle registration insurance information, do you own a motor vehicle?
that is required to be registered? Of course, the answer is no. Okay, do you own a motor vehicle that is required to have liability insurance? The answer is no. My private property is not required to be anything. It's private property. You don't have any jurisdiction over my private property. If you don't believe me, go and look at the commercial code and the principles that are identified in it under Article 9, Section 102 and Article 9, Section 109. And you'll see that my property is exempt. Social Security number collection disclosure. This disclosure is that your Social Security account number is mandatory for identification card and other license application. Really? But voluntary for election identification certificate application. This information is solicited, is solicited, is solicited, is solicited pursuant to 42 USC. Well, you can't pursue it to a code. These codes are not law. Code of Federal Regulations is not law. The Texas Family Code is not law. Codes are not law, people. Shh, don't tell nobody. The department will use Social Security number information for identification purposes and will only release the number as statutorily authorized under the Transportation Code of Texas. Hold on, we ain't finished now. Do not sign until instructed to do so by a notary public or driver's license employee. That's right, Notary Republic. Why? Because you're signing a contract. I solemnly swear, affirm, and certify that I am the person named herein. Person. Legal fiction. Anyway, that the statement in this application is true and correct, and I further certify my residence or address is blah, 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 blah. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agreement. I agreement. I agreement. I contract. I contract to immediately report to the Texas Department of Public Safety, the police, any changes in your medical condition that will affect your ability to safely operate a motor vehicle. I further understand that I am required by law to report any changes in my name, my address to the Department of Public Safety within 30 days. Signature of applicant and the notary. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a contract. So how do you get out of this contract? Well, first, you do it with an ID. Okay? That's the first thing. And as I told you, when you sign your name, you just put void next to your signature. It's that simple. You don't have to agree to exercise a right. The government cannot convert a right to a privilege. Hold on. Let's try this out for a second. Y'all just hold on. Cannot convert a right to a privilege. Stop listening. No state shall convert a liberty, a freedom, into a privilege. License it. What? License it? Or attach a fee to it. A fee? A filing fee? The state, if a state converts a liberty into a privilege, the citizen can exercise or engage in the right without impunity. This is the deprivation of rights under the color of law, and this is the Washington University state of Lake Lewis. Okay? They cannot convert a right to a privilege. This is the deprivation of rights while acting under the color in 30 law. That is the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Go ahead and pull it up, ladies and gentlemen, and read it because it ain't going to change. The courts were never given the authority nor was any state ever given the authority to convert someone's rights to a privilege, ever. Okay? No one was ever given the authority to convert someone's right to a privilege. Deprivation of the rights while under, acting under color of law, 
Notice all law enforcement. Right, this is interesting. I know what this is. This is not from an actual university, but the fact that they were able to get themselves documented as a school and to publish this, because no school would publish this. And if some school did, I wouldn't too much trust them because they would lose all kind of funding for publishing stuff like this. Sorry, it's just the way things are. Hold on now. I want you to know that the stuff in here is true. But the fact is they should not be using codes anyway. All right, and law enforcers ethics on the opening reading page of this site. So I don't want to go to the opening reading page of that site. I just know that no state may convert a right to a privilege. That much I know. All right, so let's do that. I almost fell for it. It is taken from Murdoch versus Pennsylvania. That's one place where you can find it. There is another place where you can find it. It's in Miranda. Miranda versus State of Arizona. Supreme Court has said that. Now it says the reality still is that rights cannot exist without government. That's a lie. They say, then this is this thing called the Republic News, that rights cannot exist without government. That's a lie. Rights are in dialed. Rights are not inherited. But let's, what did we say about rights before? They are inalienable, inalienable. Cannot be placed, you, they cannot place a lien on your rights. They're in or unalienable. They cannot place a lien on your rights. They cannot convert a right to a privilege. Okay? Now, the privileges and immunity clause, privileges and immunity, uh, privileges and immunity clause ain't got nothing to do with nothing. The fact that government cannot convert a right to a privilege. Willfully deprive any person of a right or a privilege protected by the Constitution. No one can deprive you of a right. Not a single person. Just that simple. All right, let's get back to the conversation, if you guys don't mind. So I've had two people call me, and I immediately gave them this understanding, especially the guy who called me yesterday and told me he had three tickets. Not one, three tickets. I don't understand it either. But he had three tickets, got tickets, got pulled over, license, registration, insurance. That's the, that's the gumbo. Okay, here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. And sorry, I'm standing up because I'm fixing something. I have a curtain. Lawrence, curtain. Lawrence. I have a curtain that was uh, moving in the wind. And it was interfering with my conversation with you all. So... What do you do? Well, the first thing you do is you go down to the clerk of the court's office and you get a subpoena. Don't get it offline. Go down to the clerk of the court's office. Get a subpoena. You want them to know what you're getting ready to do. You don't want to hide it. Don't be sneaky. You simply ask them for a subpoena. They're going to tell you no. Say, okay, then I'm going to need another subpoena in addition to that because I'm going to subpoena you to testify before the court as to why Sorry, I slipped back up to go to the door and I want to come back over here so you guys can hear me. And then you tell the person, I'll also be subpoenaing the clerk of the court because I'm going to have them explain what the rules are and whether or not your rules permit you to do what you're doing when I simply just asked you for something since I am the representative on this matter. I am a party of interest. So all you gotta say, you'll get the subpoena. Once you get the subpoena, you go home. What do you do? You're gonna make copies of that subpoena. You're gonna fill out the basic information at the top, the caption, the name of the parties, the case number. Then you're going to fill in the things that you're requesting, any and all documents, any and all video, any and all files, any and all microfiche, any and all information associated with the following. And you're going to tell them that they're going to put it on a flash drive so as to conserve paper as a result of the Paper Reduction Act so that it won't cost anybody 
anything. So they don't have to worry about claiming that there was an expense. You feel me? And I'll put it on a flash drive. And it'll be either in PDF format or Microsoft Word doc format. No other format is acceptable. Or bitmap or JPEG format for images. There you go. Then after you do that, you'll give them the address. And say so they're also supposed to make these documents available for inspection and to provide a location for viewing that is less than 20 miles from your place of abode. There you go. Send it out. You're going to send it to the, what do you call it, the Speaker of the House, the Speaker of the Senate. You're going to send it to the presiding judge of that court. You're going to send it to the Department of Motor Vehicles superintendent or director. You're going to send it to, pay attention because this is very, very, very important, the governor of the state. Now you got all three branches of government all coming to testify that you don't have the right to drive. Because that's what you're going to ask them. You're going to ask them whether or not they recognize you as one of the people of whatever state you're in. And don't, don't let them clown by saying something other than yes or no. Just answer the question yes or no. Whatever answer they give you, so that's a yes. Just answer the question for them. So that's a yes. Okay, thank you. Next question. Can you show me the law that says that you have the right to demand that I engage in a contract? Well, if you're saying, I'm sorry, I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking you to show me where the law is where it says that you get to interfere with my rights respecting contract. Of course, we all know that government cannot interfere with the obligation of contracts. They don't have the authority. So, then you call Congress, get them to say what laws takes your right to travel on the highways and convert it to a privilege. They have a right to require you to have licenses, they claim, in order to protect the public. Actually, that's not true. If you're trying to protect the public, if there is an incident where the public is in danger, then protect them. But you're protecting the public based on a presumption that you think something will happen. That's unconstitutional. Because you've already presumed the person guilty. So thus, you've subjected them to a violation of their due process right. I don't think y'all understand. They said they have a right to protect the public. So the fact that they demand that you have a driver's license, according to the Supreme Court, that they can require you to have a driver's license because they have a right under their policing powers to require you to have a license in order to protect the public interest, in order to protect the public. Well, no, you do have a right to protect the public. But according to the Fifth Amendment, you cannot take away my right because you're now taking it for public use, public interest, and you haven't compensated me for that. I don't want your privileges. I want just compensation as the Fifth Amendment says so. Now, of course, they're going to say that you can't argue this, and you're going to say, wait a minute, are you telling me I don't have the right to put forth a defense to challenge the claim that I was required to have a license? Oh, thank you. So, basically, if you guys bring a charge against someone, they just have to accept what you said, right? Okay, so why, why are we here? If, if you're always right, you're never wrong, and you've never made a mistake, and you've never done anything to violate anybody's rights, and nobody's ever had to challenge you and has ever won by challenging you why are we here that's the end of the story because they cannot respond to that question then you call the DMV director and pull up the driver's license application go over the driver's license application just ask him plain up is this a contract They'll say, well, no, it's not a contract. Well, then why does it say I agree? Isn't agree? The root word for agreement isn't agreement and contract the same? Your Honor, uh, 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 Your Honor, uh, I object. Uh, not a lawyer, not a judge. I'm sorry, are you saying that only lawyers and judges can answer questions of law? Okay, then, then let it be said on the record 
and establish in this case that this court has just said that ignorance of the law is excusable. Thank you. So I asked for an immediate dismissal. On what grounds? Well, you just said ignorance of the law is excusable, so that means that everyone has an excuse to ignore the law. So we can dispense with this by dismissing it with prejudice. I would, yes, I, I, well, then that person is required to know the law because everyone in America is required to know the law. No one is above the law. And so since everyone is required to know the law, then I need to know from this party whether or not this was a contract or not. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Michael McKnight, Brian McKnight, Michael McKnight. <laughs> oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian McKnight, uh, sorry, there's uh, somebody sending me this notification that I transacted with a business that is linked to Skype, uh, and it says they've updated their terms and conditions, and <laughs> they don't seem to understand um, we don't allow them to update their terms and conditions. And so they send a link. And so we automatically send a link in response to them. Okay. We automatically send the link to them, letting them know that we're not agreeing to any update of any terms. We'll take care of that shortly. Now you bring the clerks in because the clerks charge a fee for people accessing the court. Remember, they cannot charge a fee for you to access your right. You have the right to petition the court. You already pay taxes. You already pay taxes. Hold on. I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, it works like this. They're accusing you of something. They're accusing your estate. They're accusing your uh, fictional person. doesn't matter. They're accusing you of something. So anytime you are accused, you have a right to cross-examine your accuser. They're using the law to say you, sorry, codes to say you are violating something and you're doing something wrong. They're saying you agree to all of this. And so challenge it. Challenge it as a law. Challenge it as lawful. Challenge it as constitutional. Doesn't matter if you agree to it, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot agree to do something that is not lawful. Can you voluntarily give up your right? No, because they said it's mandatory. Look at the application. They said it's mandatory. So get them to document that it's mandatory. Have them prove on the record that it's mandatory. If it's mandatory, then you're right. I must comply with it, and I will comply with it immediately if it's mandatory. Of course, it's not mandatory. No one can make someone contract in the United States. No state, no person. That's called extortion. That's called intimidation, fear, and threat. So you don't bring up those words. You just say, if it is lawful, and if it is mandatory, then by all means, upon proof, I will do it immediately, without hesitation, from this point forward. You have my word. But if it is not lawful, then you all owe me compensation for taking my rights and utilizing it for a public use without compensating me as required by the Fifth Amendment. Remember, they're using it for public use. They tell you right there in the Department of Motor Vehicles, well, let's go to this one, Nevada, because I can tell you exactly where it is. I'll tell you exactly where it is. Nevada, right here. It says, so the state may administer laws related to licensing drivers see so the state may administer laws so they're doing it for public use they're taking away your rights for public use they're saying you must give them a social security number why what law i can show you a law that says that nobody can demand you surrender a social security number they can use the code i can use the code so this is the conversation because he's got three tickets if he doesn't challenge 
the so-called charge and you always have to challenge the charge you don't just let it sit i know there are going to be people like you know you don't do this and you don't do that they're not the ones who's been to jail they're not the ones who's watched other people go to jail sat in jail with all these stupid arguments one young lady the one of them that called me today received the ticket and tried to do all that paperwork stuff and now there's a warrant another young lady called me uh, she and her boyfriend they received the ticket suspended license one of them and now he sits in jail why because ladies and gentlemen when they suspend your license go surrender that license to them tell them you can have your junk back you're in breach of contract and you need to let them know I do hereby disaffirm this agreement from this point forward as a result of breach of the terms of the agreement between the parties you can even tell them everything we discussed here that you cannot make it mandatory that I have a driver's license but yet your application said it was mandatory that means that you misrepresented facts because there is no law making it mandatory um, and Nevada revised statute watch this so that you guys understand some of y'all don't get it wake up the Nevada revised statute is published by question mark stop listening the Nevada revised statute is also available electronically on the official Nevada library law library legislative council bureau Nevada revised statute is revised and published by the Legislative Council Bureau. Wake up. Legislative Council Bureau are not elected officials. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care how they explain it. Hold on. Officers and employees of the Legislative Council Bureau not to oppose or urge legislation, exception, conditions, or limitations on the departure of blah, 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 is a corporation centralized agency, uh, nonpartisan. It's a corporation. It's a nonpartisan centralized agency. It is not Congress. Let's see how they made up, y'all. Legislative Council Bureau consists of Legislative Commission, an Interim Finance Committee, a Director, an Audit Division, a Fiscal Analyst Division, a Legal Division, and a Research Division, and an Administrative Division. In other words, it's not Congress. That's every state. That's every state. Watch this. California is almost sometimes different, but let's see. Wake up. The California Penal Code. Stop listening. The penal code enacted by the state of California legislator is derived from penal code proposed by New York Code Commission. Legislative information, no information. Interesting. Analysts of the crime section. Ladies and gentlemen, California is just a little slightly different. Why? Because I don't want that. I said, who is it published by? So it's going to give me all of these different publishers. Give me one second to find it, and I'll show it to you in a second. Once, like I said, I got to turn that off, or it uh, shut this whole video off, and then we'll start all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, 
like I said, the state of California is a different beast. The state of California is. Hold on. Here it says the Penal Code of California forms the basis for the application of most criminal laws, criminal procedures, and penal institutions, and the execution of sentences, among other things. The American state of California, uh, in American state of California, it was enacted in 1872 as one of the original four California codes and has been substantially amended and revised since then. Entirely, the entirety of the code is available for free at, so here's what you all need to understand. The California state legislator had no authority to enact this law. California is set up just like every other state. It is the people who tell Congress what laws they want, not Congress. People keep saying, well, there are elected officials. No, they're not your elected officials. They're your elected representatives. They take the will of the people back to Congress. They stopped doing that some time ago. They stopped doing that some time ago. Okay? And because they stopped doing that some time ago, they have been allowed to manipulate and create these codes. It is not part of the legislative process. What is the legislative process? Does anybody know what the legislative process is? We're getting off track here and I'm going to get back on track in a second. Legislative process is the people telling their elected officials. Uh, you see what I just said? Elected representatives. What to take back to Congress so that they can tell Congress what the will of the people was when they arrived back in Congress. Isn't that what happened with the constitutional amendments? So why would people think that it's changed? If it did change, when did it change? So somebody charges you with violation of a code, by all means, you challenge them as to the legality of the code. Hold on. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will walk the gentleman through because he literally has boxed himself into a corner waiting until the last minute. The subpoenas will buy him more time because he will, they'll have to give him time to subpoena his evidence to challenge that evidence. You can challenge jurisdiction and a code at any time. You can challenge jurisdiction and a code at any time. That's what you must understand. Now, the other issue that we're doing this video for, because a lot of people have been getting the consults as of late, is many of them are having both financial and legal problems. Well, we cover both in the consult. Now again, that was, let's see, there, there was another young lady who, as I told you, she didn't show up in court, so they issued a warrant. And I kept explaining to her that she must get rid of the warrant first before she can do anything else. The only problem is, the warrant is for a failure to appear. The way you cure a failure to appear is by appearing in court. And give them a reason, like Luther said, for not appearing in court. One of the primary reasons that people don't appear in court is that they didn't receive notice. Well, the clerk of the court says that they gave you notice, so you put an affidavit on the record documenting the fact that you did not receive notice. If you had received notice, you would have been there. The clerk of the court cannot sign an affidavit that you received it. They just dropped it in the mail. There's a presumption. The only way to come up, overcome a presumption is what an unrebutted affidavit. Okay? That all mail comes through you at your home. But you're the only one who receives mail at that location in your name. If it came in your name, you're the only one in that particular residence, home, abode, who's permitted or allowed to open that communication. And you can say, I've checked with the Postal Service, and that article never arrived. And then, watch this. Y'all, you see, y'all need to pay attention. Watch this.
missing mail, lost packages. If you're dealing with a lost package or mail piece, USPS can help with a missing search. So go ahead and file a missing mail piece on behalf of the court because they said they mailed it. When they asked for the date, put on or about. Say, once I told the court that the mail was missing, that I had not received it, how come they didn't do a missing mail search? Shh. Don't worry about how ludicrous the question sounds. You're putting this on the record because you have to rebut the presumption. If they are claiming that they mailed something and you just put an affidavit that is notarized on a record that you didn't receive it, then they're supposed to do a missing mail search. Okay? Missing mail. Mail is missing mail is mail that has not been delivered by the expected delivery date. This applies to packages that are undelivered, lost, or late. There are rules. So I didn't receive it. So the moment I heard that this case was pending, I went and did a missing mail search. And you want to know something? The post office has no record of it. So I am needing you to reissue your original notice because I am required to be notified prior to being subjected to any loss and threatening to take away my freedom is a loss of a fundamental right. Wake up. Uh oh, sorry for yelling at y'all. Due process requires that a party be given proper notice before being deprived of any significant deprivations of property rights. Comma, United States Supreme Court. Stop listening. One of the cases is Handover and the Hoover Company. Those are the two. I, see, because I said due process, <laughs> um, procedural due process concerns, no, we're not looking. Uh, fundamental procedural fairness, uh, deprivation of rights, no, 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 no. See, and I don't like this, so. Excuse me, y'all. Let me answer this. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. That is the gentleman who I told you I helped. While he was in jail, he called me and told me he had a hearing coming up and they wanted to charge him with evidence from a videotape of having a fight in jail. And I told him what to say. He did it. He got out of jail. And then after he got out of jail, he said he was going to sue us. Really? Well, now he's back in jail. That's his second call since he's been back in jail, and I'm going to let him think about it. Like Raquel would say, think about it. So I put the Supreme Court, and you see, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lordy, 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 what am I doing? I got chat GPT here. Hold on. Let's make it smaller so I can get to this arrow right here. Hold on, too, too small. Where you going? Hey, get back over here. See, look at it. Just, it just decided to shrink to the point of oblivion. Okay. Due process requires the party to be given proper notice. Has indeed recognized the importance of due process and requirement, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. In this case subsequent case such as but I'm looking for the handover bank and trust company okay I'm looking for that see the rationale be that a person be given reasonable notice so as to calculate under all circumstances and to be apprised of the interest their interest in the outcome of that matter and be given an opportunity to be present I mean, to present their objections. Now, the subsequent cases were these cases. See, it emphasized the requirements of notice of an opportunity to be heard. So when I say challenge the fact that the clerk of the court is operating as a process server, you do that by an affidavit. You can only rebut the clerk of the court's declaration because that proof of service is a declaration. It is not an affidavit. You rebut a declaration with an affidavit. 
A declaration is not a sworn statement. Go back and look at the clerk of the court. They don't swear to nothing. Okay? But you are. I didn't receive it. Now you're going to tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but. I did not receive it. Just that simple. And there's my affidavit. Now you got proof to the contrary. Now, I it, but if it was sent to you certified mail and you signed for it, then what are you listening to this part for? Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, they'll have to reschedule the hearing and vacate any warrants. Now, the other young man who I told you about who's in jail right now, he got released on bail. And then they were driving through the state and got pulled over. And he had a suspended license. And he got arrested for the suspended license. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot get arrested for a suspended license. But he was on probation. Remember, he was out on bail, so he's on probation. So now he's in jail because of that violation. So how do you take care of that? Ladies and gentlemen, his license was suspended as a result of child support. So how do you take care of that? Ladies and gentlemen, how do you take care of child support? You file bankruptcy chapter 13. Filing bankruptcy chapter 13 will automatically put a stay on the suspension on the license, making it no grounds for them to hold him any longer. So you put the child support case in the bankruptcy and you put the trial court case in the bankruptcy. You still challenge the Department of Motor Vehicles driver's license issue. You still challenge that in the fact that they're requiring you to register your property when you're not required to do that. Remember, Congress has a right to protect the public. Okay, watch this. I'm going to put this to you so that you get it. C O N G R E S S S A R I G H E Yeah, there'd probably be some misspelled words, you see, NS, NAS, NAHAS, NAHAS, <laughs> anyway, NAHAS, anyway, uh, let's, see, Congress has the right to regulate, but they only have the right to regulate commerce, now they, they call it, they gave themselves the necessary and proper, <laughs> articles are not part of the Constitution. They're not even in addition. The people did not vote on that. Yes, Congress has the authority to enact regulations in order to protect the public. The power to regulate is derived from the Commerce Clause of the United States. They only have the power to regulate commerce, which grants Congress the authority to regulate interstate commerce. This power has been interpreted broadly by the courts. But the Constitution doesn't say that they have the power to regulate every aspect of your life. Only that now see food safety public safety for example congress has passed regulations related to food safety public safety well food safety well if they got a right to protect the public interest well with food safety don't, don't they have a right to let the food be sold until somebody gets injured ah no because food is commerce and when it's sold and somebody purchases it that's commerce they have the right to regulate it but your travel amongst the highways is an exercise of a secured right. They don't have the right to regulate that unless you are a threat to public safety. But if you have not done anything wrong, then you're not a threat to public safety and thus it can be challenged as unconstitutional because they cannot convert a right to a privilege nor can they compel you to contract. Okay, uh, give me one second. Ladies and gentlemen, they use the Commerce Clause. Okay, but as long as there's an engagement in commerce, Congress has the right to regulate, according to the court. If it does not affect commerce, interstate commerce, not intrastate, 
interstate commerce. If it does not affect interstate commerce, Congress has no authority to regulate anything. The courts have broadly interpreted. It doesn't matter what the courts interpret. Courts interpretation is not law. The courts gave them that right to interpret the law. Okay? The courts gave them the right to interpret the law. But here's the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law. Then it tells you all the things they can't make a law against. Oh, wait. Y'all don't y'all don't know the Constitution? Hold on. Go read the first ten amendments. Those are all of the things they can't make a law against. The, the Constitution is a written document. It's one document. It's not divided into ten amendments, a hundred amendments, nineteen billion amendments. It's one whole document. Congress shall not make a law, uh, right to petition the government for redress of grievance and the right of the people to blah, 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 shall not be blah, blah, blah. That's all speaking about Congress, people. Notice that it doesn't talk about the president in the first 10 amendments. Congress were supposed to enact laws on behalf of the people. That's why it says Congress shall make no law. What you guys did not read the Constitution, go back and read all 10 amendments in a row and don't separate them. Let's, let's have chat GPT. Watch this. Wake up. Can you provide the Bill of Rights and do not separate it by amendments, comma, but provide the entire Bill of Rights as one document without separations? Question mark. Stop listening. I'll take care of ChatGPT in a minute. Let's see if it gives me the rights without no it's separated I don't want the separating them hold on now let's see what's what give me one second y'all now I want y'all to see this right here September 25th, 1789, Congress of the United States proposed 12 amendments to the Constitution. The 1789 Joint Resolution of Congress proposed the amendments is on display, blah, 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 in the rest, rotunda. The 10 of the 12 amendments were ratified, ratified by three-fourths of the state legislature. See, they went back to the people. That's the ratification. There was a proposal Congress didn't enact nothing. They proposed it. The people ratified it. Pay attention. Article 1 was never ratified. Excuse me? Article 1 was never ratified. The, the ratified articles, 3 through 12, is the Bill of Rights. The people ratified the Constitution. Congress did not ratify the Constitution. They took it back to the people, and the people told their representatives what to do. I don't know why people don't know this. This is the way I've learned it when I was in school. My teachers taught me this stuff. They it's right. They, they said, you need to learn this, boy. I said, who are you calling a boy? They said, oh, I'm sorry. I was talking to you. Oh, my bad. Anyway, now let's read this as one article. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the rights of speech, or the press, or the right to peacefully assemble, or to petition the government for redress of grievance. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed by Congress. No soldier, Congress, shall have no soldier in the time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in the time of war, 
but in the manners as prescribed by law, enacted by the people. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, Congress or anyone else, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause. See, a warrant can only issue upon probable cause. Well, police officers don't get to determine probable cause. There's nothing here about reasonable. Go ahead, re reasonable suspicion. There's nothing in the Constitution about no reasonable suspicion. But upon probable cause supported by oath and affirmation. See, probable cause is a hearing. That's where evidence is introduced. Oath and affirmation is evidence describing the place to be searched, the persons or things to be seized. No person shall be held to answer for a capital otherwise infamous uh, crime, blah, blah, blah. All criminal prosecutions. This is what Congress was restricted from violating people. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution. The United States only gets powers that are delegated to it nor prohibited to it by the states. The states are the people. They prohibited, pro 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 prohibited, did, 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 did Congress shall make no law. It's one document. So eventually y'all are gonna get it. It's called the Bill of Rights, but you guys do know it's articles. But it was ratified. So the Constitution, pay attention, is the Bill of Rights. The Constitution is not that junk afterwards. The Constitution is the Bill of Rights. That's what was ratified. Okay? These amendments were ratified December 15th, 1791, and form what is known as the Bill of Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bill of Rights is the supreme law of the land. Why? Because it was enacted by the people. Who are the people? Let's do it again because y'all don't pay attention. I don't know why y'all don't pay attention. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to it by the state. Shall be reserved to the state respectively or to the people. The people are the state, ladies and gentlemen. The people make up the state as a whole. So, this is the law. Now that's just to let you know um, the conversations I have with people and the consults are designed to give them a footing, to get rid of that junk that they've been taught, that they've been told so many things and they believe that junk. They did no research and they come to me and I have to way through all of that junk so I just tell them no I don't want to hear all of that just tell me what happened why because I don't need to know what they think if they could think better than I could then they wouldn't be coming to me the consult is not where you get to tell me everything and you get to take control the consult is where you get to tell me what you're needing help with and after you tell me then I tell you what the law says then I tell you okay you can try this 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 and this I give people at least five different options Go to any attorney and see that they will not give you five options. They're going to give you one or two. And if you get two, you're good. Because one of the answers is going to be bubble gum. Yeah, you can go choose some bubble gum, and that ought to solve the problem, and then your case will be gone just that quickly. Just choose some bubble gum. You know, you're going to get a bubble gum answer that, that anybody in their grandmama could have known. Go ahead. Try the free consults with an attorney and ask them a serious question. Ask them what I just said. How are the articles part of the Constitution when they were never ratified? Wait, wait, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, I apologize. Let me let me correct something. I, I got to correct something. The articles were ratified, ladies and gentlemen. Pay attention. The ratified articles, 3 through 12, constitutes the first 10 amendments of the Constitution or the U.S. Bill of Rights. Hold on now. What about those other articles? What about those other articles? You know, like Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Article 4, Article 5. And what about those other articles? That junk is not part of the Constitution, people. Congress had no authority to delegate itself the authority to regulate commerce. But however, pay attention. 
Congress shall make no law. There was no prohibition against Congress making regulations. As long as it didn't infringe upon the people's due process rights. So Congress has not violated the Constitution by regulating. When their regulations violate the normal course of due process, then it's unconstitutional. Why? Because when you read, we, the people, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't care about this stuff right here because this is the people going to Congress and telling them what they resolve. Remember, they gave how many articles? 12. Only 10 were ratified. <coughs> okay? And of the 12, only the Bill of Rights survived. There you go. All right, now look. This is number 10, this is number 9, this is number 8. So according to them, they gave them 13, and apparently, apparently, and I want you, don't take it from me, according to them, they gave them 10, and three were not ratified. That means there would have been seven. I mean, they gave them 12, and three were not ratified. That means there would have been nine. So that junk right there ain't even the truth. Ain't the truth at all. So, back to the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. All of you are going to have to learn how to challenge the evidence. There is no evidence. There's never any evidence. That's why you have to challenge it. Make them prove that that junk is evidence. Evidence of what? Evidence of something, because that's what they're claiming. Make them prove it. Lord have mercy. If y'all don't start speaking up for yourselves and get them to do their job, okay? Get them to do their job. All right, I got to go because I got some things I have to take care of. Y'all take care of, and I will speak to y'all later. Goodbye.